والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ايفري وان وعليكم السلام How many participants do we have today? For the time I being, think six, 16, 16 in the chat room. Okay, alhamdulillah. All right, let me just start by sharing my screen and then we'll get started slowly. Okay. okay, so what I did today is to make the, um, the website for Quran, uh, the font a bit bigger so that we can follow. I hope it's big enough. Yes. And I hope my voice is clear because I noticed last last time on the audio, I wasn't very loud, but sometimes it relates to the audio setting of my mic. This is not a built-in mic, it's an external mic. So I have to play with it a bit sometimes. So inshallah, you can hear me well. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So uh, let's start, Bismillah. We have today a new chapter of the Quran. Uh, the next chapter, chapter 79, Al-Nazi'at, Al-Nazi'at, uh -huh. and this chapter is made up of exactly 46 verses, uh, and we have decided through common agreement that we will cover the first 15 uh, verses or ayat, inshallah, today. We'll have it in three parts, uh, 15 today, 15 next time, and then the time after will be 16 to complete the 46. Um, Let's get into today's um, today's surah, surah al -Nazi'at. Okay, so I'm going to first start by reading the first 15 ayat of surah al -Nazi'at for you, my dear brothers and sisters. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. والنازعات غرقا والناشطات نشطا والسابحات سبحا فالسابقات سبقا فالمدبرات أمرا يوم ترجف الراجفة تتبعها الرادفة قلوب يومئذ واجفة أبصارها خاشعة يقولون أئنا لمردودون في الحافرة أئذا كنا عظاما نخرة قالوا تلك إذا كرة خاسرة فإنما هي زجرة واحدة فإذا هم بالساهرة هل أتاك حديث موسى So uh, here actually we should continue but inshallah we will probably do until ayah 14 or 15 so um, we just try to make it into manageable uh, sections of, of the Quran inshallah so uh, we are going to now start, inshallah, the tafsir section. Uh, as we have um, started uh, since day one, um, we we actually have to recap that um, this chapter, chapter 79, is within Juz Amma. And Juz Amma, we said that um, it's the last Juz of the Quran, Juz number 30, number 30. And this juza is mostly, if not all, of Meccan, uh, you know, revelation. So the revelation was during the Meccan period. And particularly for chapter 79, Surah Al-Nazi'at, it is also a Meccan surah. And just to recap for you, uh, my brothers and sisters, what are the characteristics or what we call sifat, sifat of uh, the Meccan chapters? First of all, um, what is very characteristic of uh, Meccan chapters is that they are quite short, especially in Juzama, the Meccan chapters are short. Uh, the theme or the thematic is related to uh, resurrection. In Arabic, we call this al baath al And the third thing, um, there is a foregrounding or emphasis on aqidah, on doctrine. So you see, these are three uh, main traits 
or characteristics or sifat of the uh, Juz Amma and the chapters in Juz Amma, and particularly, of course, this one, which is chapter 79. Now, as we start this chapter, especially from ayat number one to number five, we get uh, the uh, awsaf or the descriptions or the characteristics mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of angels, some angels as agreed upon by the majority of, uh, of Islamic scholars, al-jumhur, we call it. So from ayah number one to ayah number five, first one to verse number five, we are in fact um, receiving a description of angels. All of these are angels. So the first one, ayah number one, um, let us start by this first ayah. And Naziat he refers to Al Malaika Lati Tanzau Al Arwah Min Al Ajsad Bishidda. So, this, the angels, what type of angels are they? These are the angels who strip, who take the soul from the bodies with force and with violence. So, I will explain to you this a bit more. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends uh, the angel of death to seize uh, souls, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually uh, treating people into two different categories. We have al-mu'minun, al-mu'min wal-kafir, the people who believe and the people who unbelieve. So it is said when the angel is about to seize the soul of the unbeliever, uh, and the soul inside the body does not want to be seized or does not want to leave the body, the angel extracts it or rather snatches it uh, from the body violently or harshly. So you have the translation here by the angels who tear out the soul of the wicked with violence. So here, this person whose soul is uh, uh, taken away, it is the unbeliever, the unbeliever, right? Um, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has given us an image to understand a little bit. Um, it's like a metaphor or an analogy, an, an analogy of how this soul is extracted or rather snatched away from the body. So the Prophet sallallahu said, ذَلِكَ مِثْلُ السَّفُودِ الَّذِي يَعْلِقُ بِالصَّوْفِ الْمَبْلُولِ So a translation of that would be in the same way as a rod or an iron rod um, which has teeth in it and which is placed in wet wool, you know, the wool when it's wet and then rapidly pulled or snatched out. So let me show you a safood. You know, this is called safood. It's, an, it's a rod, but the rod which has indentations like teeth like this, right? And imagine putting that inside some uh, wool, you know, the sheep, the sheep has wool, right? And the wool is wet and then you snatch it harshly or fast. So what happens is that that wool is rapidly also pulled out or snatched out. So uh, it's actually torn to pieces or in the process of pulling, you know? So this image is provided by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith. Uh, and uh, by analogy with the wool and the rod, it's the same as the angel snatching the soul or ripping the unbeliever's soul from their bodies. Why? Because it knows, this soul knows what is awaiting it, being an unbelieving soul. In the, in the, in the moment it is coming to actually be ext being extracted from the body, it knows what is awaiting it. So it's not keen on living, leaving the body. May Allah protect us, subhanAllah. So on the contrary now, we have the similar image of the angels who take the soul of the believers in the next ayah. So if we, if we go to ayah number two, now here, this is the soul of the believer where the angel in this following ayah, ayah number two, uh, is taking away or drawing, we're not saying here tearing out, see the, the word is different. Nazi'at and Nashitat. Nashitat is uh, the believer's soul is departing or leaving the body gently. Gently, right? 
gently drawing out the soul of the blessed or the believers. So uh, there are some analogies that have been created by Mufassirun to explain this word nashitat. Um, they say that when you see, for instance, a faucet, you know, when you are in, in the bathroom or in the kitchen, you see the faucet and you see a water dropping from the faucet. So the water which is dropping from the faucet is gently being drawn out or falling from the faucet, naturally, gently. Uh, uh, so there is no violence or there's no harsh extraction here by, the, by this angel. Um, and there is another, uh, there are two other images I'd like to tell you about, uh, my brothers and sisters, just to kind of visualize this process, although we will not see it until we experience it. Um, um, in Arabic, Al-Ba'ir Al-Ladi Yanshutu, Min Aiqalihi, Nashitat Yanshutu, it's like the image of the camel. Uh, so, you know, Arabs like to use analogy with camels. Uh, the camel who is attached, and then when he stands up, the, the tie uh, or the rope that is uh, in his neck slowly uh, is unfolded, not in a harsh way. So this is how the believer's soul leaves their bodies. There's another analogy I heard recently is like, uh, you know, the dough, bread, and there's a hair on it, and the hair is actually pulled away from the dough. So this is a smooth process of the angels removing or gently drawing out, rather, uh, the soul of the blessed or the believers. Okay, then we go to a third angel, um, a category of angel in ayah number three. So here, this angel or these angels are gliding or swimming in the sky. So, sibah uh, is like swimming, and they are described as those angels who glide along on errands of mercy. Okay, so I'll, I'll probably give you some a bit more in depth and others I will just mention like this, uh, because you know, um, this is uh, from what I have been able to accumulate as far as knowledge. So uh, if I have more, I will always give you more. Then in the next ayah, we have the angels described as such. فَالسَّابِقَاتِ سَبَقَ uh, These angels, السابقات, they are proceeding or racing um, to actually, there's two, there's actually two explanations for this ayah. The first explanation is that they are racing to, um, you know, uh, to execute the orders that have been given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another explanation is that they are racing uh, the demons or shayateen uh, in the doing of uh, deeds to serve the Muslims. So the first uh, tafsir is the most, um, the one that has been kept, meaning that these angels, they actually rushing uh, or being more uh, fast in executing the orders of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, as soon as Allah gives them the order, they will race to uh, execute it. Um, now, if I want to give you um, another verse, which in fact is very close to the meaning of this verse, verse number four, we can go to uh, Surah Al-Tahrim, Surah Al-Tahrim, which is chapter 66 of the Quran. And if we go to chapter 66, and uh, particularly uh, verse number six, so it's easy to remember, and we see in the description of these angels who are very keen on implementing or executing Allah's commands. It says here, um, let me just read the whole ayah, the whole ayah is better, I don't want to cut it down. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu khu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara nara wa quduhan nasu wal hijaratu alayha malaikatun ghilabun shidad la ya'asoon Allah ma amarahum wa yaf'aloon ma yu'maroon O you who believe, save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is man and stones, over which, over this fire, are appointed angels, stern and severe, who flinch not from executing the commands they receive from Allah, 
but do precisely what they are commanded. They don't hesitate, they flinch not. Uh huh. So you see, as soon as the order is given, they will never hesitate. They will immediately execute the commands they receive from Allah and they do precisely what they are commanded in the same way as they race to execute the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these angels. Now we move on to the next ayah, ayah number five. So this refers to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angel to do. Okay. Allah uh, is actually asking them to do things, different things. For instance, there are angels appointed for particular tasks. For instance, angels uh, for inzal al-matar, falling of the rain. Uh, for isal isal al-arzaq, for instance, uh, giving the livelihood or giving the rizq to people or delivering delivering rizq to people. Or, uh, for instance, nasr al mu'minin. Uh, triumphing, <clears throat> the triumphing or the, the victorious state, making believers victorious or successful, and other matters which Allah commands these angels to execute or perform. So al-mudabbirat, those who arrange uh, to do the commands of their Lord. So it is very close to the meaning of the previous ayah. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, to recap from uh, verse 1 to verse 5, all of these ayat, are what we call aqsam. What is that? They are in fact uh, oaths where Allah is swearing by his creation. Allah is actually taking an oath or taking a uh, swearing by his creation. So what this means is that Allah uh, here from the first ayah, where, uh, when you see the, the word what? It is, a, it is an indication of taking an oath or swearing by something. Wallahi, wallahi, by Allah. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever Allah makes an oath, um, there is a jawab. What is jawab means there is a conclusion to that oath. What is that, the, the end or the conclusion of the oath? You say, wallahi, I will do this, right? That's a conclusion or jawab. So in this case, particularly in this chapter of the Quran, Mufassirun uh, say that this jawab, the answer of the oath that Allah is taking by his creation is mahdhuf or deleted. It's not made explicit. So if you go through the whole chapter, you will not find an explicit jawab to the oath, an explicit answer to the swearing that Allah makes. However, uh, the end point is implicit. The end point that the uh, oath is taken by Allah is, uh, is being made uh, is that you will indeed witness judgment day. So this is the uh, implicit reply of the oath that Allah has taken. So meaning you will be indeed resurrected and sent back to face judgment day. And this reminds us a little bit of the previous chapter Surah uh, Al-Naba, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising that indeed you will come back to life and face judgment. So here I want to open a very quick small parenthesis uh, for uh, Qasim. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears or takes an oath, he takes an oath by his creation. Okay, so um, he Azza wa Jal, can swear by whatever he wishes, but for us humans, it is not permitted and it's not permissible to swear by anything except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I hope you know this, my brothers and sisters, uh, for, for us humans, we shouldn't make the mistake of ignorant people who swear by their sons, by their daughters, by their, uh, you know, by their life, or even sometimes people swear by the prophet. This is not permissible in Islam. We are the create, created, we are the creatures, we are not the creator. So we have to uh, swear only by Allah. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, Man kana halifan So whoever wants to swear, let him take an oath by Allah or keep silent. So we should only swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah can swear by his uh, creation. And it is in fact very common 
uh, you will notice in the last chapters from 78 to uh, 114, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by his creation. So you have wadduha, wal-layli idha saja, wal-nazi'at, wal-shams, wal-shamsi wadduhaha, wal-qamari idha talaha, wal-nahari idha jallaha, wal-fajr, wal-layalin ashar. So Allah commonly um, uh, makes, takes an oath or swears by his creation, right? So as we said, um, there is qasam or swearing or taking an oath and there is jawab or qasam, the reply to that oath means I swear that so and so. Um, so here in this chapter of the Quran, chapter 79, the jawab or qasam is actually implicit, but we know that uh, the hidden or implied jawab is that indeed resurrection is undeniable. And here are the hints to that uh, implicit uh, response. So if we go to ayah number six now. So here is the reply which is more or less hidden because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now talking about what is going to happen. What is going to happen in ayah number six according to Mufassirun you see a rajifa um, Mufassirun say this is in fact the first blowing of the horn. Do you remember last week and the week before, I think, we talked about the horn being blown by the angel called Israfil. And Ar-Rajifa is actually the first uh, blowing of the horn. And if we look at ayah number seven, Ar-Rajifa, which is followed by the subsequent. The subsequent is the second blowing of the horn. The second blowing of the horn, right? So a rajifa reply, uh, uh, relates to the first blowing of the horn by Israfil, and then a rajifa is the second blowing of the horn, right? So remember, the first blowing of the horn is when everyone on earth will expire or will decease or will die. Then the second blowing of the horn is when the souls will be resurrected, right? to face judgment day. Remember last week we said, Second blowing of the horn, people will be resurrected. So a radifa is the second blowing of the horn. So you see, um, these chapters of the Quran, they are very intertwined. They are very intertwined. There is always tathkir. It's coming back, these reminders, always. Even this, it's not just, uh, you know, simple or, you know, uh, trivial repetition. It's meaningful repetition. So there is a hadith reported, uh, mentioned by Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, and we know that Abu Huraira is a companion of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi who reported a lot, a big corpus of a hadith or narrations from the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he uh, reports that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that, between the first and the second horn, between them are 40. So uh, Abu Huraira reports, and he, people around him uh, asked, 40 days between the first blowing of the horn and the second blowing of the horn. Is it 40 days? So Abu Huraira says, abate. I don't know. I do not know. They ask him, Arba'una shahran, 40 months. And he says, Abayt. I don't know. Arba'una aman, 40 years. Abayt. So he said, I only report what I heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that baynahuma arba'un, between the first and the second blowing of the uh, horns, there are 40. So we don't know. We don't know whether these are days, months, or years. It's quite scary anyways, even if it's days. Uh, so we continue, inshallah, with ayah number eight. After ayah seven, we have wajifah. Okay, here, um, wajifah. wajifah means scared. Hearts, which on that day will be scared. Uh, in other words, my brothers and sisters, these hearts are in a state of not knowing what will happen next. 
not knowing what will happen next. And this, in fact, doesn't only refer to the unbelievers, it refers to both believers and the unbelievers, because this, the knowledge of the unknown that only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't know what's going to happen next. So there is a state of agitation, of fear, that both the believers and the unbelievers will experience. And in ayah number nine, cast down will be their, their eyes. They will be in a state of khushua, of humility, humility, uh, being in this uh, state of really um, being at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in ayah number 10, يَقُولُونَ إِنَّ لَمَرْدُودُونَ فِي الْحَافِرَةِ So here now, we are moving from uh, both uh, believers and unbelievers to these, the vocalization here, who is saying this? These are the unbelievers now. Who is saying that? These are the, the unbelievers or the disbelievers. They are wondering or talking while still being in the, in the life of this earth, in the earthly life, in the dunya. They are in a state of disbelief, they are incredulous, and they are stating, will we be returned to our state having, after having become uh, deceased? After we die, will we come back to life again? Uh, in fact, by their words, they are, uh, they are denying resurrection, right? So, um, they say now, meaning in this worldly life, while they are alive, what, shall we indeed be returned to our former state after we die? Who will be brought back, right? So al hafira here is the former state of bodily and earthly life. The former state, meaning bodily life. Body, you know, in, in a shape, in a former state after dying. Uh, and then in ayah 11, the same um, disbelievers here, the speech is basically showing their denying of the resurrection. They say, we will be returned back after we have died and we have been transformed into Ivam. We have been transformed into bones that have been become rotten or powder or decayed or dust. We will be returned to you know a physical shape. So here this shows the vocalization of uh, their disbelief, their state of disbelief. Okay. Now what comes next? Ayah 12 is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered them. Um, no, sorry, not yet, not yet, not yet. This is still them. This is still them uh, in their state of disbelief. Now, in this ayah, brothers and sisters, uh, So here, تِلْكَ إِذَا كَرَّةٌ خَاسِرَةٌ إِذَا This is actually إخفاء and this is إظهار كَرَّةٌ خَاسِرَةٌ قَالُوا تِلْكَ إِذَا كَرَّةٌ خَاسِرَةٌ Now, let's explain this ayah. In this ayah, ayah number 12, the unbeliever is stating that if it's really the case, if it's really the case that we will be returned to life after we have died, and if it's very, it's really true that what Muhammad said to us, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Of course, they don't believe in her, in his mission, but if they say, if it, if what Muhammad brought to us as news that we will be returned to life after death, then for us this is not a winning situation. We will not. It's not going to be a good deal for us. In other words, you know, they say if it's really the case that we will come back to life after we have died then in that case, it will be a returning with loss. It will be a return with loss. We will not really be winners in that case. Mm. SubhanAllah, their words shows, <laughs> shows the truth, you know. Even they're in a state of denial, they have spoken the truth, in fact, because at that time, because of their denial, if they return, then they will face the judgment, which is not a good judgment for them. Um, then here, at this point, in ayah number 13, this is what Allah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, now, after all their denial, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, Allah is replying to their denial and affirms, verily, it is, it will be but a single compelling cry. Now, let's explain this. What is the, the meaning of this cry? In fact, it's simple. It is referring to this single blow of the horn. 
the one we talked about earlier as Ar-Rajifa. Yawma the first blowing of the horn when everybody will be exterminated by that first blowing. And everyone will await for the second blow where they will be resurrected and start to face judgment. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after all their denial of saying, are we going to be returned? Are we going to be brought back to a physical shape? Allah says, it will be a sin single blowing of the horn that everything will stop living and then the second blowing of the horn is ayah number 14 now at this at this point people will then wait for the judgment uh, where they will be awakened and standing waiting for allah's judgment subhanahu wa ta'ala okay and then uh, probably if we stop here but if i could just give you a preview of the next um so this is another phase that comes next, next, which is another dimension of this uh, chapter. Hal ataka hadithu Musa. Hal ataka hadithu Musa has the story of Moses reached the, reached you, and then it will start another theme, which we probably should stop before uh, maybe moving on, because I I just want to show you here that at this point in ayah number fifteen, this chapter moves on to another phase where we are going to learn about the story of Musa that Allah is going to tell us. So um, this is actually our section for today, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair for being here every week. And inshallah, we can benefit from this together. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha al-ant. Astaghfiraka wa atubu alayk wa al-asri. Inna al-insana la fi khusr. Illa ladina amanu wa aminu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haq wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Assalamu alaikum and see you next week. And please don't forget to uh, work on your memorization, your hifz. Okay. Inshallah. All right. See you next week. Assalamu alaikum.